So here's a shave biopsy. It's a very broad shave. And you can see that the, the epidermis normally would be kind of like that, but here the epidermis gets really thickened. And it's not the whole epidermis that's thickened, but just individual areas. That's thick, that's thick, that's thick, that's thick. So we have these areas of really marked acanthosis. And then in between, uh, the epidermis is kind of more or less normal in thickness. And on the surface, there is a lot of thick keratin, and most of it's orthokeratin, meaning it lacks uh, nuclei. You see there's a few little bits of nuclei here and there, so a bit of perikeratosis, but really it's kind of this dense, compact orthokeratin. And look at these dilated blood vessels here. This is a clue to us that we're probably on the lower leg, and that's where we are. This is actually from the shin. The patient has these plaques that are very itchy on the anterior shins. So this, uh, these vessels are called stasis change. It's just from uh, gravity-related uh, uh, blood flow pushing back down on the blood coming up from the legs, and it makes these kind of uh, reactive proliferation of capillaries. So we see that all the time. It's kind of a normal variation. As people get older, they get more and more of st this stasis change. And um, so it, whenever you see it, though, these little clustered capillaries in the papillary dermis, useful clue, even without being told, that you're probably on the lower leg. So sometimes on exams, it's really helpful to be able to tell um, the clinical information by knowing those little background clues, even if you're not given the information. And then also in real life, it's helpful because sometimes, uh, you know, things get mislabeled. And, and once you see, you realize, oh, wait, this can't be from the scalp. It has to be from the lower leg. And then you can go investigate and see what's going on and why, why the, the label is switched up. So look down at the, uh, when we look down here at the base of these, um, these uh, areas of acanthosis, we can see that there's a band-like infiltrate made of de a dense band-like infiltrate of lymphocytes kind of hugging along the bottom of the epidermis. And it's most predominantly noted at the, the tips of these acanthotic regions. And when we go even closer, we can see that this is actually a lichenoid infiltrate. It's not only a band of lymphocytes, but it's a band of lymphocytes that's kind of chewing up and destroying the basal layer. So normally there's a real clean division between the basal keratinocyte layer and the uh, dermis, and that's the, that's the basement membrane. But here the basal keratinocytes and basement membrane are being destroyed by the lymphocytes. And what's being left behind are these little bubbles, these vacuoles. We call those a vacuolar change or liquefactive change. And then little pink blobs, which represent dying keratinocytes. See, there's a little pink blob there. So you can call them cytoid bodies or uh, savat bodies. There's a bunch of different names for them. But they basically represent dying keratinocytes that are, are dying here because of the lymphocytes that are attacking the basal layer. So again, see, dying keratinocyte. You can even see its retained nucleus there. You can see all these vacuoles. And you can tell that the line between the dermis and epidermis is very blurred and difficult to distinguish. So that's a, the definition of, um, of an interface change, and when there's interface change with a thick band of lymphocytes, we call that lichenoid interface dermatitis. So here, on the anterior lower legs, itchy plaques and uh, papules and nodules that um, are uh, have a really thick acanthotic epidermis and then a band-like lichenoid infiltrate underneath, this is called the hypertrophic variant of lichen planus. So hypertrophic lichen planus is usually on the lower legs, and it usually has not only a lichenoid band, but also these little kind of skipping areas of really thick acanthosis. So that's a really useful finding, I think, that you go have acanthosis and then not that much acanthosis. And then there's more acanthosis and then it kind of skips. So I find that really helpful and that you have interface change and lichenoid change that's most prominent down at the tips of these elongated acanthotic reedy. And one other thing that's a little different in hypertrophic lichen planus that's different from regular lichen planus is that you can see eosinophils and plasma cells. Those are usually not very abundant in regular lichen planus, but we often see them in the setting of hypertrophic lichen planus. So there's an eosinophil right there, and here's a plasma cell. See his little pink perinuclear hoff there. So that's a um, that's well, a really nice example of hypertrophic lichen planus. And occasionally, they can present as kind of solitary lesions on the lower legs and not be as diffuse and rash-like. And uh, we'll get biopsied because uh, they can mimic a basal cell carcinoma or squamous carcinoma uh, clinically. So a real nice example, hypertrophic lichen planus.